Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, great to have you with us on the program today. It's been described as a must-read for every truth seeker, a novel 30 years in the making. It's the Legacy Series. An author is Robert Maxim and our guest once again on the program. It's actually his incredible journey through several lifetimes as far back as a million years. As a child, Robert witnessed several sleep time visits to other worlds and witnessed countless alien craft. These experiences continue to date in both wake and sleep states. Robert has spent over 40 years studying science, religion, and the science of life. He lives and works in Illinois in the field of information technology. And he's back with us on This Week in America, Robert Maxim, author of the critically acclaimed Legacy series. Robert, welcome back to the program. This is always fun. Thank you for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. Glad to be on board. You know, I mentioned a little bit of the background there, and we had three or four emails after the last program where people said, we've just picked up in the series that you've been doing with Robert. Go back and give us the backstory. Give us a little bit of information on exactly where Robert came from and bring it up to the current time. So we're going to do that on the program today. Time will go by way too quickly, and we'll, we'll touch on as much of this as we can. And I mentioned the, the sleep time visit started early on in your life. I think, what, it was 1973 when you first had that, that vision. Talk about what happened. Well, I was originally born in, in Cuba, and since early age, I can remember when I was actually uh, two months old, uh, experiences that I had with my dad. And I did, I recognized my dad. I knew who he had been. I had a sense, but I couldn't put it into words. Um, the same thing with my mother. I remember uh, seeing since a child what I wanted, what I was looking for, my fears, my concerns. I described them to my parents that, man, you know, they are shocked that I have that good a memory. But as I grew up, um, I always had to stop. I'm here because I have something to learn. I have something very important to, uh, to do. Um, now, in the learning part, the biggest question was, what is life? What is God? What is, what is death? What does it all mean? Why is it? Um, and as I grew, I began to get, get an interest for, for science. Now, understand that in Cuba is a very isolated place. Uh, I, I remember reading just one science magazine wow. when I was a child. One science magazine. And I left the island when I was 11. In all that time, I saw only one science fiction film. So as far as having uh, all this exposure about life under the worlds and space travel and science, the background was definitely not there. That was not the focus of the government to get people thinking behind it. However, when I was five, I had my first sighting. And this was a mothership that I saw over the uh, northern northern part of the island over the sea. Uh, and it, uh, it kind of silently did something to me to witness that crap. I felt like I was in contact with something or with someone. I couldn't quite explain it, but it was wordless. wordless. Whatever happened in those 10 seconds of that sighting completely changed my mind. Um, I became more musically inclined, more objective, more scientifically minded, more, shall we say, divine in my way of thinking. Right. Right. Uh, and, of course, six years passed by, I came to the States, and not much changed. Uh, life here I found to be fairly much like life down there. People ignored a lot of facts. They just went about life. Uh, trying to survive and objectivity, beliefs, science, life and other way. That was just not in people's minds, you know. But I had that itch. I had to know. Um, and so when I was 15, July of 1973, that was a big one. That's when it really caught up to me and I had this um, sleep time vision, the first like. Um, vision of, of Venus, and from there it went on. It what went was on. it like when you had that first vision? Did Were you aware of what was happening? 
No. Uh, matter of fact, I had uh, just walked in from uh, using a telescope outside, uh, fell at the door because uh, I, I just lost all energy. I just became limp and I crashed at the door. From the point of being at the door to being in bed, lying down, I don't know what happened. Uh, it just blotted out. I, I was wearing pajamas that didn't fit me. I didn't. I don't even know where I got them from, but I had them on. You know, things I, I would not wear or do, I did. I packed away the telescope. I never did that. So I just remember lying on my left side, looking at, at a clock that I had beside me, and just a few seconds before exactly 10 o'clock, Got uh, and I saw myself traveling to this light tunnel, went into this light, and the rest is what transpired. I had no control over what happened. I had no control over my vision. Actually, I had no control, shall we say, as to where I was going in this vision, how I was moving my body. It's as if someone was moving it for me, because I, I couldn't. I really did not know how to relate uh, mechanically in in this dimension. Right. When that when that happened, when you w when this experience is over, how did you handle that? Did you talk to 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 friends, to family, to, trying to make sense of all of this? How did how did that uh, how did that progress after this 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 experience you had? Well, talking to family was. Uh, I'm no gainer. Uh, I trusted a few friends who turned out to be my, my worst critics. Uh, they treated me like a nutcase. Uh, they put a lot of distance from me. And I, I, I lived alone for many years. And no one to talk to, no one that cared about me except to ridicule me as much as possible. But I never lost faith. Uh, I kept I uh, kept close to my heart what I had seen and tried to live it in every way I understood. And with every passing day, that understanding grew. And of course, I made several mistakes. I made a lot of assumptions. I was as naive as you can get. But uh, I learned many things along the way that helped put me reduce, uh, shall we say, the negative angles of life. Right. And more and more into the right path, uh, and here I am. The guest on This Week in America is our old friend uh, Robert Maxim, rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N.com is his website. Also, unariusunited.com will give you some information. And, if, of course, we've got our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can link on directly to, uh, to both of those websites. The legacy series we're talking about, and the legacy series is basically Robert's life story. This goes back millions of years. It's, it's a fascinating read, a fascinating, uh, great stories, great visuals as you're reading it in your mind and hopefully made it into a movie here at some point. But you're, you're obviously, as a young man, struggling with all of this. Why do you feel you were you were chosen, I was going to say, for this gift? Did you consider it? Do you consider it a gift? Everyone has this gift when they want it. Now, I've come to understand that before you incarnate, you learn certain things in spirit and you bring them down here to, shall we say, practice or exercise them. Many individuals will come back as a scientist, as a musician, as an artist, um, devotional leader, but these are things they learn in spirit, and then they come to this world to practice. Uh, in my case, uh, I can't, I can't be self-serving with the answer, but I can, I can, I can tell you that I did prepare for uh, carrying out many things in life, and legacy is definitely one of those things that I have proposed myself to to write. Not only to help make sense out of life and help myself but create a pathway for others that by reading it, they can learn from my mistakes, 
learn from the things that have learned, and prepare themselves to take the next larger leap in their spiritual preparation and studies. Now, now one thing that people must be aware of is, of course, there is no such thing as live once. Uh, it is all about live many. And with each life, we are progressing, we are growing in understanding and preparation. We are experiencing a level of consciousness in this world, but we have hundreds, we have thousands of levels of, of intelligence that makes up our soul. When we supposedly die, we are raising that consciousness to these other levels. And in those levels, we are learning things uh, that are that are not physical. Uh, we, we are preparing a, a state of consciousness, kind of like a kind of like a lesson plan, you would say. Right. And and then it's time to return. We come back down those levels. We incarnate. Now we are uh, the same consciousness, which never dies. It just changes states. Um, so we bring those things to this dimension to express them. If we did not do that, how would we take ourselves from this physical consciousness level and then live in a higher consciousness level? We have to first practice and conquer this grade, this dimension, and then slowly crawl up. I get asked this question many times. Maybe I can spend a second to discuss this and swear on the subject. Sure. The concept of going to heaven. Who doesn't want to go to heaven? Everybody does. Nobody wants to go to the other. Exactly. Much <laughs> other place, right? Yes, yes. We yes. want to go to heaven and, uh, you know, stop and think. Do they have football in heaven? Do they have pizza in heaven? Do they have, uh, you know, uh, domino games in, right. in heaven? What do they have in heaven? Nobody has a clue. Uh, they think they grab a little harp uh, and jump around in a cloud, or they're living in this golden city, you know, always happy. Happy of what? I'll tell you, uh, most people don't realize that if they spent two hours in heaven, they get tired of it because the, the attitude and the things that they like are from down here, and they have not let them go yet. This evolutionary process of reincarnation is a process whereby we go up there, we pick up a little bit in a much higher conscious level where we can take it, bring it down, bring that experience down here and learn just how much we need to let go of this physical experience. And as we let it go, guess what happens? We become more spiritually minded. We become more integrated with this higher consciousness of ours, we start getting pulled out of this dimension, and every every step, every pull, is one step closer to the heaven that you want to go to. But you can't get there any other way. It's you have to get there by learning what's there, learning the science behind it, and learning how to let go of what we have here. Because what you have here is totally out of phase with what's up there. You know, you mentioned yeah. science, and it's interesting because I, I mentioned in the beginning your background in science. You were a, a concert pianist. Uh, you were very creative in in that sense, and you shifted gears to, to science. I'm sure as this was happening to you, began to happen to you, continued to happen to you. You had you had questions. You're a very intelligent person. You needed some rationale. Just needed to make sense to you. Did you find those answers in science where, okay, this is connecting the dots now. I, I understand what's happening. Well, I'll tell you what, science got me into trouble. Because, uh, of course, you come back from an experience like this and you start connecting the dots, connecting the dots, connecting the dots. And then you compare what we have done here and all of a sudden the things in this world don't make sense with what you saw. What's, what's wrong? So uh, I started science off on the left foot. Okay. Uh, because I, uh, the first thing I did is I pre-read all of my physics courses books and I started working the formulas and I said, wait a minute. 
this formula doesn't work right. What if I do this formula this other way? And I'm talking about Newtonian mechanics. And to calculate the size of the atom, you take Coulomb's law and you make it equal to Newton's law. But there's two equations to Newton's law. So what they were putting up on the board was Newton formula number one. Yeah, put them equal and the radius of the atom was pretty small, made sense. But if you took the other equation and replaced it, with, they're supposed to be interchangeable, right? So I said, uh, teacher, uh, can I go to the, the board? I wanna, eh, yeah. <laughs> and I said, oh, sure, come on. Come on. So I went up to the board and I said, okay, you know, F equals MB squared over R equals uh, KT squared over R squared, you know, cancel out terms. Yeah, R equals this, and you know, it's three times 10 to my step. So then I said, okay, now what if we change the acceleration term? Instead of V squared over R, we do, uh, we do some GMM over, over, over R, R squared. So the R's cancel out, and you have GMM equals KT squared. Okay, cancel out, and take, you know, what the terms are, the G, the, the mass, and everything else. Does this side equal this side? No. Actually, the difference between the two is like 1 times 10 to the 39th power. I mean, the size of this atom would be like from here to the Andromeda galaxy, if not further. Mm. So, the teacher said, sit down. <laughs> Uh, and after that, I got taken to, to the dean's office, and I got grilled. Uh, and I was actually told, we know these things, but this is all we can teach because of national security. Wow. Hmm? So that was an eye-opener at a young age for you. That was the first wake-up call that I better take a look at this more seriously. And... Believe me, I took every equation I could think of, and I just tore them apart. Uh, and then something told me, you know, you're looking in the wrong place. And it took me like 20 or 30 years to let go of mathematics and realize that in spiritual domains, you're not really using the same mathematics. You're using the power of the mind, and that's what you need to develop. Of course, we have to know the different relationships of energy forms and frequencies and, and friction and everything that we have in this dimension in order to master it. But we have to understand what those terms come from. So here we are meddling with, you know, here's a cell phone and it has a certain mass and it falls at this rate and therefore it has this force. You know, when you evolve out of this world, you're looking at it in a different way. People of other worlds think of this cell phone not as mass, but as an energy unit. This has certain energy forms that come from a higher dimension. They're all oscillating at, at incredible rates. E and each has a certain predetermined, shall we say, characteristic. And that characteristic is determined by forces that are interdimensional in terms. So if you see an atom, Okay, a proton and an electron, that's hydrogen. Okay, two protons, two electrons, you're going to have helium. Now, how, how is it that that second proton or that second electron turned hydrogen into helium or into gold? Why does gold react the way it is just by adding more electrons and, and protons to it? These things are prefab with a predetermined purpose for expression in this world. So gold, silver, uranium, all air, all of these things that surround us, they are pre-designed interdimensionally so that we can have a semblance of, of order, characteristics, elements, things of that nature in this dimension. But you step into a higher dimension, and guess what? You have a totally different slate of elements. Time and, and distance change. It, it, you know, some of the things that I saw in, in Venus immediately shocked me. How can you have how can you have a crystal? Which most of the things that I saw were, were crystalline in form. But imagine this crystal, right? And we know on this plane that if you cast light on this crystal. Yeah, it's going to glow a little bit, you know, 
But in, in this dimension of the Zap, if light was applied to this crystal, it multiplied it to such a degree that it blinded you. Even if you covered your eyes, the light went right through your eyes. It was that powerful. So it's a regenerative process. I could spend hours describing the science of these higher dimensions, but you know we don't have the time. But well, and you've experienced that. That's what's what's absolutely yes. amazing. That um, yeah. gee, I don't know where the time has gone, but it has gone. And I I hope that we've answered some of the questions where this all began with with Robert Robert Maxim, our guest on the program. That's M A X X I M. His website is rgaten, G-A-E-T-A-N dot com. Information also available at unariusunited.com. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, both links are there, and you can go directly to, uh, to the, the two websites and get the information. The Legacy Series is available at Amazon, at, at Robert's website as well. It's biographical. It's what we've been talking about in this program and so many programs that Robert has been with us. It, it's a fascinating read. It's a great story, and it's an accurate story as well. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for being with us on the program again. Uh, and I get the, session, the, the, the impression every time we talk, you're still in an evolving stage in, in in this particular life, right? Where you're still on a day-to-day -day basis, you're finding out things. Oh, yes. This is so expansive, Rick. Uh, it, it, the door has been opened, and the amount of information behind that door is just incredible. You can't assume it in one lifetime. You can't assume it in 100,000 lifetimes. There's so much to learn out there. It just scratches the surface. It's, it's a whole new evolution out there. Once you find out what we're really made out of, what life is about, what is the infinite, but those things are just so exciting. To, to learn about it, it, it frees you from all the things that bind you down to this world, and it can be proven. And the legacy and Unaris United has the evidence. We, it's it's all documented, and it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, legacy is entertaining and it's informative. We'll give you a number of answers to questions you maybe didn't even have until you start reading it, and then you start with the questions, and you've if you've got the answers there. It's always fun having Robert with us on the program. He will be back. We've got much more to talk about. If you have questions, and we've got some from the last couple of shows that we will get to the next time, just go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and there's a, an area there where you can submit a question. You go to Robert's website and, and do the same. We thought it would be interesting to go back and sort of lay the groundwork for how this all began with Robert when he realized that he had something that he had something special and he needed to share that, and we wanted to go back and do that on the program today. Robert, thank oh, you please. so thank you so Great. much for being with us. We got so much more to talk about, and we will do that next time. Uh, fascinating uh, program. Time goes by way, way too quickly. We'll see if we can slow it down the next time. They've got so much more to talk about. Thank you for being with us once again. Sure thing. Bring bring the questions on. Get a hold of us. Uh, you can get a hold of Robert direct or get a hold of me at the website this week in America.us. Robert's website are Gaten, G A E T A N dot com or unariusunited.com. You're listening to This Week in America website this week in America.us. We're back after these messages. <laughs> 